so heavy. My essay has a signal to background of, wait for it, 27. Last week it was 12. And this week I got it to 27. Wait till I tell Joa. Uh -huh. Yes? Yes, just the person I was looking for. Yeah, that essay of yours. Which one do you think is better? The one with signal to background 27. Let's look at how you really should be looking at the data. So let's take a look at how your Z prime factors can be calculated. Your Z prime factors are influenced a lot by the variability in your data. So the first example we're going to show, the signal to background is going to be low and your variability is going to be moderate. How is it going to affect your Z prime factor? So in this example, as you can see, we've got a data set that has relatively low signal to background. You see what it is, we'll calculate it. And you've got some variability. You've got, let's see, it's got moderate variability. So where the control signal, the negative control signal or the signal with just DMSO, there was no drug in there. You've got like 261,000, 266,000. Uh, 271,301, as you can see, you know, around uh, 270,000. Well, let's calculate the average and we will soon find out. So in Excel, if you select the cell, if you're not familiar with it, you select the cell, you go equals. And if you start to type, it will offer you some suggestions. Uh, the average came up, so I'll select the average. And then if you just kind of drag down all the cells that you want it want to calculate you hit enter and it tells you you know we are dmso our negative control is uh 200 284,271 that's the signal that we get and then we can do the same here so you can do this average uh this is not an excel tutorial so i'm not going to go too much into it but you know you can drag it again uh, but I can show you there's another way that you could do it as much, much faster. So in terms of our signal, we have 578,831. So we've got a 284,000 signal versus a 578,000 signal. So for our signal to background, let's check out what that would be. So if we want just a signal, this is our signal. Uh, we're going to divide it by the background and that's how easy it is for your signal to background and we say oh we actually just doubled we have a uh, twice the signal as the background double signal you know this is considered low the thing is your signal to background alone is not going to be sufficient for you to calculate how robust your assay is. You need to know the variability in the signals. So we do that by calculating what's called the standard deviation. If you're not familiar with standard deviation, I have a statistics tutorial up here. Take a look. It makes statistics really accessible. I did really basic stuff. So we are going to look at the variability. Standard deviation is variability. You know, like an example that you see in the video uh, is the height of babies versus the height of adults. You know, there's a lot of variability in adults, but in babies, you know, they're generally the same height. So if they're the same age, they're generally the same height, whereas in adults, you can have quite a range. So that's the deviation from the average that you would expect so this 284,000 how much does each of these vary from that and this 578,000 how much does the, each of these vary from that that's what you're getting a sense of so once again you do equals and you start to type standard deviation I've used it before so it comes up and I can drag it across and hit enter and it's telling me that for my 284,000, I have a standard deviation of 26,090 variability. So another way, you know, I want to get it now for, for the control, the positive control. This is the negative control. And what I can do is just come onto this cursor until the cursor, the cell until the cursor turns black and drag it across. And it's actually calculated it here and we can check because when we tap on it, we see that that's what it's done. It's done this, the standard deviation of that. So that's a quicker way instead of kind of doing it all over again. Right, so you've got your signal to background. To do our signal to noise, we need the standard deviation because our signal to noise, the formula is, signal to noise is your average or mean signal 
uh, you take away the background because you really want to focus on the signal only and then you divide by the position of your background. Here we go. And we calculate the signal to noise. So we just do equals our signal positive control. We take away the negative control. I'm going to put it in brackets so we know, so the formula knows that it needs to treat these two together. So we do our positive control, we take away the background, and now we get to divide it by the standard deviation. Yay, and we get a signal to noise of 11. Right, so what does that mean in terms of how robust our assay is? Well, to do that, we have to do the Z prime factor. And the Z prime factors formula is you have, you, this is just looking at controls. So you have three times of your standard deviation of the positive. You multiply the standard deviation of your negative by three as well. You add all that together. Then you're dividing it by the positive, the average signal for your positive into which you've taken away the, the average negative signal. So how will that look? So three times the standard deviation. So we've just calculated the standard deviation of the positive signal as uh, 41,498. So we're gonna take that and we will multiply it by three. Just do it stepwise and then we can put it into the actual formula. So we can take the standard deviations of the negative signal, which is 260,090, right? We multiply that by three because what we're gonna do is add that together to get the first part of our formula. So let's go sum, we go equals. You always have to put the equals so Excel knows that you want to calculate something. I select the sum and I'm just gonna add those together. So that's the sum of the standard deviation, the variabilities. And now the other part of the formula is to take away the average signal for the positive control from the average signal of the negative control. So all we're gonna do is have a look here and our average signals are here. So we want the positive and we're gonna take away the negative for that. And we are done. The entire Z factor formula is one minus the three times standard deviations and they get added together. So the negative here and this one's the positive. So we get one minus the standard deviation, the positive and the, of the negative. And that gets divided by the average signal for the positive. This is not how the formula is actually written, but that's the idea. It's this is more, you know, everyday language. So average positive minus the average of the of the negative to see how robust the essay is. So we've kind of gone ahead, we've calculated the uh, three times standard deviation of the positive, three times standard deviation of the negative. We've looked at, we've taken away the positive signal, the average positive signal from the average negative signal. Right, so let's calculate our Z prime. What will it be with a signal to background? of two, uh, signal to noise of 11. Wow, how robust is that essay? Drum roll, do, 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 do. Okay, we got equals one minus, because it's between uh, zero and one, and that's this one here, this sum here. So we just take that, and we just need to divide it by this part, which was the average of the positive minus the average of the negative, and we've done that here. <gasps> Drum roll! Da, 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 da. Ah! Oh, 0 0.31, what does that mean? Well, it's not a very robust essay. The Z prime factor assesses the quality of the essay itself without the intervention of the test compounds. And it comes from this paper published in 1999, and it gives you this statistical assessment of your essay before you go into your high throughput screens, before you go into the pilots and the primary screen. So it's a statistical characteristic of any giving essay. It's not actually just limited to high throughput screening. It can be used to assess any essay. And that's because you're looking at your signal windows and the variability within that. 
so your z prime if you get a z prime of one i mentioned before it's between one and zero and if you get a z prime of one it means that you have an ideal asset this means your dynamic range so your ability to differentiate the interactors from the non-interactors or your signal from no signal is infinite lovely heavenly essay then you, if you have a z prime that's less than one but is greater than 0 0.5 this means that you have a large separation between your signal and no signal so it's in fact an excellent essay anything above 0 0.5 is an excellent essay if on the other hand if your essay is below 0 0.5 but it's still greater than zero it means that you do have uh, some separation, although it's small, and you can still do it. You can still go ahead if you can't get it any better, but it's just not a great essay. If it's zero, it means there's no separation between your signals. You know, just crap, really. Not to worry. Let's have a look. The two ways we can fix this. We can increase the signal between these two, your, our positive signal and our negative signal. If we increase it, that will fix it or let me just show you how magical it is if you if you reduce the variability so we're going to take this exact data set here and we're just going to make the variability between them so here you can here see somewhere 20 thousand two hundred and three thousand two hundred and ninety four thousand then we have three hundred and seven thousand what if we, we had a data set where the variability was much much less would that fix the problem? Let's find out. Okay, here's the data set where we have improved the variability. And all I did was take the same data set as before that we had just calculated. So same data set. What I've done to improve the variability, if you have a look, is I've just got, you know, 261,000, 266, 271. There are no 300,000 in here, right? So it's tightened everything up. And I did the same for the positive control, 553,000. Anyway, let's calculate it. So once again, we want to know what the average signal. So we do equals before we can tell that signals to Excel that we want to do some calculations this time. So drag it across. Boom, 273,000 for our average. Remember, we said we can just drag it across instead of going back and dragging through here. So we have now 570,000 versus 273,000. Let me just put these signal to background situations here so it makes it easier to follow. Before the signal to background, if you remember, it was two. Two, what's it gonna be this time? We've changed the variability. So, signal, we, well, this should be red, but anyway. Signal divided by your no signal, as in your control. And it's two, as you can see, changing the variability has not changed our signal to background because it was essentially the same ratio. But if we have a look at our standard deviations this time, so we just start to type, select that is the standard deviation that we want to calculate. Thankful we don't have to do it by hand. So that's those and drag it across to get it for the positive control as well. So we now we say that the we see that the standard deviation, the variability in the data is 4877. And for the positive control it's 14233. So if you remember before the variability was 26090 versus 41000 498. Now we've reduced that variability to 4,877 versus 14,233. So when we now do our signal to noise, you will see something very impressive. So our signal to noise now, and we know the signal to noise is the signal <laughs> as in the name. So we go for the signal of the positive which is the signal really we're going to take away the we're going to take away the signal for the negative let's constrain it with brackets and we're going to take a divide into that the signal of the background because we're really only focusing on the signal this time right and look at that 61 where before 
the signal with that variability, signal to background was only 11. By improving the variability, we have a signal to noise of 61. Okay, so how would that affect our Z prime factor? And once again, the Z prime factor is your three times of your standard deviation. So it's one minus because it's from zero to one. So one minus uh, three times of your uh, standard deviation for your positive. And you're gonna add it to the standard deviation three times again, the standard deviation of your negative. Divide it by the signal, the average signal, which I just abbreviated as AVG. Okay, hit enter. Oh, look at that, guys. Look at it, look at it, look at it. Look at it. The same signal to background of just two. But because I have really tight variability, the is 0 0.81. How good is that? Awesomeness. That is great. Another way, if you still, you know, if you're, you still have the variability kind of body, you know, 384 well played or 1536 well played variability is real. We can keep the same variability, but then we're going to need a higher signal to background. So let's take a look at how that would go. Same data set. And all I did was just increase the signal. My average for these data set. So we have the average of the signal for the positive, the average of the signal for the negative. We can basically do the signal to background, which doesn't care about your standard deviation. And that's why it's misleading. Uh, so our signal to background totally ignores standard deviation. Boom, increasing my signal window. We now have signal to background 27. How is the variability though? We're gonna go ahead. Signal to noise is your signal. So this one, you're going to take away the background signal. Let's constrain that with brackets. We have to divide it by the standard deviation of the background. So we get the signal to noise. Wow, a whopping 283. So how's that going to affect the Z prime? <gasps> Let's find out. Ah, look at that, guys, look at that. We have a Z prime above 0.5 with the same variability. Now let's look at how you calculate your Z factor in order to determine what compounds or what molecules can be considered a potential hit. So an important statistical parameter in all of these is your Z factor calculation. Your Z factor calculation contrasts with your Z prime calculation. Of course, it had to be difficult. It had to sound the same so that you can get confused. So to calculate it, you need your reference control. So each plate, you will have a 100% effect control and a 0% effect control. You're going to combine the results of all the compounds, which you have expressed as percentage of the 100% effect control and 0% control, so that you can compare them. So now that you've done that, you actually have to check that they are normally distributed because the calculation only applies if your data is normally distributed. So you're going to plot a histogram to see if it's normally distributed. And if it is normally distributed, then you use three standard deviations over or above the mean, which is also known as the average, to select a statistically significant hit hit being inverted commas because you have to actually validate it but at this point you know you you get a signal that is three standard deviations above the the average then you think okay this is above the noise this is a genuine interaction so in the next video we will look at detection assays or detection technologies so the high throughput screening it's usually a readout of light so fluorescence luminescence or absorbance so see you then, take very good care of yourself. Mwah.